Hey there beautiful, welcome back to Polished in Portland. I'm Christy and in this video I'm going to be showing you how I made this matte chrome honeycomb beehive set. So the first thing I'm going to do is I pull out my Claws Eye Design book. This is just their plain one. You can find that in the description below. Uh, and we figure out what we want on each nail. So here I am just drawing out the general concept of what we want. Uh, and collaborating with her real time helps her get a set that is uniquely her and exactly what she wants. We decided to go with a base of black. Uh, that way we could do like matte black and ultimately our starting thought process was that we would have like a matte black background and the honeycomb and the drips would all be shiny. Ultimately in the end, we decided that we really liked it all matte. But now what we're going to do is just go through, lay down a base of just black on all of her nails and then cure that for 60 seconds. Then we want to wipe the inhibition layer off and we're wiping that off because when we use this Luxa Shine, we're going to be using that to create the drips. So I'm using that number three brush and I'm just putting a dollop at the bottom of the drip and using my liner brush to pull that all the way up to the cuticle. That helps create a, a drip that goes straight down. So now when we cure this, when it comes out of the light, the chrome will only stick to that shine. It won't stick to the base color we have underneath because it's no longer sticky. So now that that Luxa Shine layer is cured, we're going to use Prestige from Luxa as well as the silicone tool also from Luxa. And we're going to wipe the layer that we just cured with isopropyl alcohol, 90%. Then we're going to use that silicone tool to rub the chrome into specifically the design that we just created and that's the drips. You can use like the little makeup applicators, that's totally fine. I choose to use this because I feel like it just gives me a little more precise application and that way I'm not rubbing it all over the nail and risking it sticking to something that I didn't wipe off well enough on the black with the inhibition layer beneath that. So rub that into all of your drips and then once you've done that take a fluffy brush and just dust it all off so that when you put a base coat over or your next layer it doesn't go into it. So now we're going to be using Luxa Shine again. And we're going on to the other two nails with the honeycomb design. So same process, we want the chrome to stick to just the shine. So put your shine down, cure it, and wipe it. Also with isopropyl alcohol. And I use 90% here. Uh, it helps it dry the best. So these stickers, I don't know where I got them from. I got them when I first started nails, but you can look them up on Amazon wherever you want. Uh, just nail vinyl stickers. So you're just going to place that onto the nail and press down lightly or hard and then take that silicone tool again and rub the chrome into the areas of that sticker that you want it to be applied to. So see how specific I am able to be with where that chrome is going. Um, you can also use the silicone tool to help push the sticker down. Um, and we're just rubbing that into that shiny layer. So you just do that where you want it all applied in your design. And then once you've done that, you can just peel the sticker off. And voila, you have your design. And then you just want to brush that off as well. So I'm just gonna move on to the second nail.
Okay, now that we have all the chrome applied to our design, we want to protect that chrome from anything that we're gonna do on top of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay down my layer of base coat. I use Luxa Base here, uh, and then we cure that for 60 seconds. I'm gonna do that over all of it, uh, and that just protects things from chipping and uh, for any wiping you may need to do on your next layer. Which for me, I wanted to specifically crisp up some of that honeycomb design. So I'm going through with a detailer brush. This is the number two and the Luxa gel pod I showed. It's the Noir gel pod. And I'm just kind of crisping up those lines. Uh, and you can do this on any design. You can also leave it. Uh, it looks a little more, not that this is natural, but it does look a little more natural. I just wanted to touch up some of the lines where I felt like they weren't as clear as I wanted them to be. So if I were to wipe anything on this layer, I wanted to protect that chrome. So if I wiped anything, it wouldn't remove that chrome that we just did. So if you do that, cure that for 60 seconds. All right, now we're gonna use that gel pod to create our bumblebee, or at least the base of our bumblebee. So the first thing I'm doing here is I lay down just kind of like my general shape, and then I start to perfect it. Uh, this was the first nail I did when I made this design and I hadn't quite decided if I wanted to add the stripes um, before I went through to kind of refine it later. So I did add the stripes first, um, but you'll see here, I do just go back through and completely cover them up. So you can do it one of either one of both ways. You can create your lines with the gold, or you can go back through with your black afterwards, which is what I chose to do. So here I am filling in the bumblebee body and the head with my gold gel pod. And you can use whatever color you want. I recommend gold just because it stands out in, on the black and kind of matches that gold chrome. Um, so just kind of perfect your body and then you want to fill in the head and then create some wings and then we'll go through and add some details. So our bumblebee body, the gold base is all cured. So now we're gonna go in and add those details with our black noir gel pod. Uh, and I'm using my number two brush here. And I'm very happy that I went with the black on top of the gold. I feel like it just uh, was allowing me to create better details with that. So I am just creating the stripes here. And then I'm gonna go through and add kind of little, little mini strokes into the background. That kind of gives it that fuzzy look. So you want to be sure that you're keeping those not too far into the body of the bumblebee. You're gonna do that around the edges and then you're also gonna do that around the stripes of the body. I will say it is easier to pull the black onto the gold than it is to push. So right here, I'm kind of pushing that black into the gold, and right here, I'm pulling it into the bottom. So definitely find which technique's easier for you. I prefer this. It just created a more fluid motion, I guess. So you can see I go back through and kind of correct the one I did up above. So you just do that on the top and bottom of each of those uh, stripes into the gold, and then we'll go in and do some details on the wings. So now with the wings, we just go through and create the little details. Um, I found, I think, just a random, um, like, bee 
image off Google. Uh, and I was just trying to create like a wing pattern that looked like it was similar enough. So they're just really thin lines. I'm using the thinnest portion of my brush here and just very little bits of gel on my brush. And then I'm going through and also just kind of perfecting some of the, the hair that I, or fuzziness in the, to the head of the bee too. And then we'll cure that for 60 seconds. So now we're gonna create the little legs for the body of the bee, and then there will be some up top as well. Um, the key with this is to be sure that they're somewhat symmetrical on either side if you're showing uh, the full view of the bee like this. Um, and I suggest doing the larger ones first and then fitting the small ones in after. Now we go in and do two up top and you create them nice and small and thin. And then we put in some little antenna, cute little baby antenna. Once we've done that, uh, go back through with that black gel pod and create kind of an outline against that gold chrome. It just sets it apart and makes it look like obvious that that leg sits on top of the chrome. Now we're gonna go through with our foil gel on the thumbs. So we lay this down and cure that for 60 seconds. Then you just press in the gold foil however you like whatever pattern as hard or as soft as you want and then all additive gels like um, foil gel um, bloom gel things like that i suggest putting a layer of base over it prevents chipping and then we go through and we top coat um, i top coated everything in matte and like i said before my initial our initial plan was to cover everything in matte, and then go over the gold chrome with shine. Ultimately, we really liked how the chrome looked matte. It was just really fun and gave it like a, a whole different vibe. So we stuck with it. So here are our final results. And there you have it. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment below and I'm happy to help. If you want to purchase any of the products used in this video, I'll go ahead and put links and discount codes in the description below. Thanks so much for joining me today for these pretty little baby bees. Please subscribe for more and I hope to see you all next time.